Well, I think that we all knew this was coming. It was inevitable since the beginning. Bernie Sanders has said that he intended on supporting whoever the Democratic Party's nominee was. If that wasn't him, then he'd, you know, enthusiastically back that individual. And here we are. Now, what does surprise me is how quickly he's endorsing Joe Biden. I don't think this is a smart decision, even if I knew he was going to endorse Joe Biden. Um, if I were part of Bernie's team advising him, I would have instructed him to wait because I think that that would be a way for you to extract more concessions from Joe Biden. Nonetheless, Bernie Sanders uh, endorsed Joe Biden in a live stream that was pretty awkward. Take a look. So today I am asking all Americans, I'm asking every Democrat, I'm asking every independent, I'm asking a lot of Republicans to come together in this campaign to support your candidacy, oh. which I endorse, to make certain that we defeat somebody who I believe, and I'm speaking just for myself now, uh, is the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country, a president, and you made this point, who downplayed this pandemic, who ignored the advice that some of his people were giving him, which has not who has not used the defense production act early on so that we could produce the masks the gowns the gloves the ventilators that our medical personnel desperately need who today because i understand that is threatening to fire dr fauci who has been uh, an unbelievable i mean it is who has been day after day the voice of science uh to the american people trying to explain how we go forward uh, in this crisis, and he's threatening to fire him. So to me, uh, for all of those reasons, and, and so many more, a president who doesn't, apparently has never read the Constitution of the United States, who believes he's above the law, a president who lies all of the time, a president who has at least shown me that he is a racist and a sexist and a homophobe and a xenophobe and a religious bigot. bigot. I mean, for all of those reasons or more, we've got to make Trump a one-term president, uh, and we need you in, in the White House. So I will do uh, all that I can uh, to see that that happens, Joe. And, and I know that there is an enormous responsibility on your shoulders right now, uh, and uh, it's imperative that all of us work together uh, to do what has to be done, not only in this moment, but beyond this moment in the future of this country. And in that regard, I have been very pleased that your staff and my staff have been working together over the last several weeks uh, to coming up with a number of task forces. Uh, these are uh, task forces that will look at some of the most important issues facing this country. Uh, the economy, how we create an economy that works for all, not just a few. Uh, education, how we create the best educational system in the world for all of our people, uh, how we deal with climate change, uh, which as you indicated is an existential threat to the planet, uh, how we deal with uh, criminal justice, because uh, we don't want to continue having more people in jail than any other country on earth, how we deal with immigration uh, reform, uh, and uh, you know how we have a healthcare system that is so much better than what we have right now. Now, it's no great secret out there, Joe, that you and I have our differences, and we're not going to paper them over. That's real. Uh, but I hope that these task forces uh, will come together, uh, utilizing the best minds and, and people in your campaign and in my campaign uh, to work out real solutions to these very, very uh, important uh, problems. So. Uh, look forward to working with you and uh, bringing some great people into those task forces. That was hard to watch. I'm not going to lie. That was hard to watch because he just dropped out like that pain is still there. The, the, the pain is real. And um, I'm not ready to see him do that. But here we are. And for those of you wondering, that was one of Bernie Sanders most disliked videos. He rarely gets ratioed on his videos, but his supporters clearly aren't feeling it. And to his last point there, I'm sorry, but I'll pass on the uh, technocratic task force. I don't know what's, what that's going to accomplish. 
other than placating progressives. Like, we already know what needs to be done with regard to health care and criminal justice reform and education. I don't need a task force to come up with more solutions. We have the solutions. The question is, will we ever get someone in power who's actually going to carry out the solutions that we need? So I, I have no interest in the task force. Um, and a lot of people are enthusiastically following Bernie Sanders' lead and uh, endorsing Joe Biden. But one of them is someone who I really respect, Brianna Joy Gray, who was his press spokesperson. She tweeted out, with the utmost respect for Bernie Sanders, who is an incredible human being and a genuine inspiration, I don't endorse Joe Biden. I supported Bernie Sanders because he backed ideas like Medicare for All, canceling all student debt, and a wealth tax. Biden supports none of those. And that's exactly it. Um, I will say that I really respect her for saying this because she knows that she's going to be attacked by Biden bros for saying this because it is heresy if you don't fall in line immediately and support Joe Biden enthusiastically. Lick that boot. And she's not doing that. So kudos to her for actually having a brain of her own and not just doing exactly what the establishment commands of you. So let me explain why I think this is a bad idea on Bernie's part. I know he was going to endorse Joe Biden, but to endorse him this early when you've extracted precisely zero policy concessions from him is completely just it it's strategically not savvy. I'll put that, I'll put it that way to be polite. Um doing this it it benefits you in no way at all. It benefits the movement in no way at all. If I were Bernie Sanders, I'm playing hardball. I'm holding out. I'm not making an endorsement until I get at least one firm policy concession from Joe, Bo from Joe Biden, along with the promise that he will appoint someone to his administration that is actually going to hold his feet to the fire with said policy concession. But Bernie Sanders got nothing, and he endorsed him. I mean, over the weekend, Joe Biden has proposed Medicare at 60 and um, canceling some student debt, although when you look into it, it looks more like a more charitable loan repayment program. I mean, you got nothing, and you endorsed him already. What's the point? Like, why? What's the point? You're, you're gaining nothing. Like, we know that when Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg dropped out and endorsed Joe Biden immediately, there was something in it for them. Whether that is a spot in his administration, an endorsement from Obama or Biden for another office, you know, maybe Pete Buttigieg wants to run for governor, I don't know, but I know damn well that they wouldn't have endorsed Joe Biden and dropped out to endorse him if they weren't going to get anything. So I don't understand why Bernie Sanders would do this so quickly, because you're basically taking all of your leverage and you're throwing it away just like that. It makes no sense. Bernie Sanders isn't good at playing politics. That is what I learned over the course of these last couple of months. But at the same time, it's part of the reason why I love him so much, because I don't want someone to be so calculative. I don't want someone who's going to play politics and do things for purposes of political expediency. But at the same time, you know, on the same uh, coin but opposite side, I want him to try to do what he can for the movement. And admittedly, that does mean once in a while you've got to play politics, right? Be authentic when it comes to policies. But when it comes to fighting the establishment and this is a real fight i emphasize the word fight because that's what this is this is intra-party warfare you've got to play a little bit of politics at least a little bit and the fact that he chose to endorse joe biden while getting nothing it's really frustrating because back in 2016 bernie sanders didn't endorse hillary clinton until like june or july and immediately she came out with one of his policies now it was watered down, right? It was a uh, free college. I don't remember specifically what it was. I think maybe it was means tested. And we all know that she didn't actually support it. She was just paying lip service and trying to placate progressives. But nonetheless, you know, he, he tried to get what he could. And on top of that, he had some say with the platform. But I mean, here you endorse Joe Biden. And when it comes to healthcare, he proposed Medicare at 60. Bernie, your supporters are very, very young. So how does it benefit you to immediately concede and endorse him when he isn't offering your supporters specifically anything? I mean, this is when we need to learn how to get a little bit more savvy as progressives and as leftists and to acknowledge that as leftists, 
we will basically be perpetually marginalized when it comes to the establishment. But what little power we have, we've got to understand that there is an effective and practical way to harness that power. And just immediately conceding and endorsing Joe Biden like this, I just, I don't think that's a good way to use the power that you have to get any change whatsoever. Now, a lot of stuff is happening behind the scenes, I'm sure. So I don't know the conversations that Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden had. But what I do know is that just looking at this as an outsider, to me, it looks like Bernie Sanders just kind of rolled over and died. And I get it. He's fought for so long. He doesn't want to do it anymore. He's a nice guy. He's ready to move on with his life. But if, you know, actually fighting for real change, and not just that, but helping to get Joe Biden to a point where he's actually more electable and there's maybe a little bit of enthusiasm among young people, you needed to keep pushing. But I mean, the entire media narrative was drop out, drop out, drop out, drop out, drop out. And once he dropped out, it was endorsed Biden, endorsed Biden, endorsed Biden. He went on Stephen Colbert and I, I think that that was the first thing he asked them or, or I don't know if it was the first thing, but it came up. Um, so it's tiring. I get that it's exhausting to have them constantly hound you. But I mean, we believed in you to be the leader and I kind of feel let down here. I'm not going to lie. So, you know, it's not like I'm surprised this was inevitable, but it still sucks to see it. It hurts to see it. And Bernie Sanders, um, this should be like, it should serve as a reminder that if you are a lefty and you're getting involved, don't play politics until you need to, right? Don't play politics with voters. Play politics with the establishment. Bernie just never learned that. Um, and because of it, I think we will get zero policy concessions. And I'm not like delusional enough to think that Joe Biden would even follow through with anything he proposed us. But I mean, you, you do what you can in the position with the cards that you're dealt. And I think Bernie Sanders played his hand poorly here.